welcome to the Boyfriends Podcast, where we help you find your circle and, and your man. And your man. man. <laughs> As you I can see, we are virtual this time um, because your boy got COVID. <sighs> It had to be you. Like, you know, you know, I don't know. I feel like everybody's getting it this time. So unfortunately, it was just my turn. I also had COVID. Don't feel bad. (laughs) My dog was having an asthma attack. Just give me like one second. (laughs) (laughs) Oh no. This is literally what I deal with when I'm working from home. She's like having I'm like on Zoom in a like really important meeting, and then she's having like an asthma attack in the background. (laughs) What's your dog's name? Dakota. 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 I love that. Say hi. Oh. She interrupts all, all, all the things when I'm working from home. Totally. <laughs> where's your stepchild? I'm so sorry for interrupting. <laughs> my child, not my stepchild. My sorry. child is with his dad. <laughs> Nello is with his dad. My stepchild. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't know the dynamics. I, I apologize, your child. No, he'll be home. We, we was, were supposed to switch in the wintertime. We do oh. every other season. We switch. You switched? Look at Renee. I knew she was going to She looks so good. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry for looking confused when I have no context. <laughs> we, oh. we worked together for six years. We broke up, but he has built a bond with the dog. And so instead of him having to keep the dog we just put every season and i'm i'm extremely busy so it's, it really helps also that's great yeah no if yeah. i ever tried to take my dog for a season i would actually castrate them so that's great yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right so um we have uh a we oh wait wait let me i have to say before we, you see we don't have saran with us uh, so he's uh, doing some some work today, so he won't be joining us on today's episode, uh, but he will be back with us, I believe, next week when we are all back in person. So trust me, this is just a one episode thing, or at least that's what we're trying to make it be. Um, we miss you, Saran. Yeah, we miss you, Saran. Oh, but you know what? Hold on. I got to take off this. All right. No, oh, yeah. <laughs> In the show. Ooh, ooh. Let them know. Let them know, Jerry. Yes. Oh my God. <laughs> I just, you know, I had to. I had. I love it. I said what I said. Oh exactly. <laughs> it ain't changing up over here. Did you? Did you need? <laughs> that with you. Yes. It ain't changing up over here. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my uh, God. You know, I just. Oh, <laughs> oh my God. I am done. You I'm done. A fool. <laughs> You're a fool for that one. Oh my that's God. That's how you do it, Jerry. And that's how you do exactly. it. Like, exactly. Like, come on. Um, you right. <laughs> so, anyway, with that, <laughs> I love that reaction, by the way. Um, oh, I have. An interesting topic tissue. to jump into today. <laughs> um, it's uh, the question is, what does it mean to be happy with myself? So that's what we're going to talk about today. Um, who wants to start us off here to kind of to kind of uh, answer this question, or like I guess address kind of where it's coming from, Melvin? Maybe. Because I feel like he yes. kind of he kind of generated this topic for us. So, so I thought you might do that. So, <laughs> I actually last night I took a couple of surveys uh, from people because uh, I was like, "What does it mean for you to be happy with yourself?" And these are some of the answers I got. So, someone said, "Finding your own lane and being." happy and you're like finding your purpose in life or what it is that you are happy with or where it is you're supposed to be. Someone else said being able to be your authentic self without care of anyone's else, what, what anyone else thinks. Someone said being attracted to yourself. Um, would you date yourself? Does like if you like saw yourself and the qualities in yourself, does, would you want to date yourself being attracted to yourself? 
Um, being proud of the work that you put into yourself as far as like weight loss. Like if you have a goal in life and once you reach, the, reach those goals, being happy with that, being able to reach your goals, that's being happy with yourself. Yeah, so those are some, just a few of the things. I don't want to get all of them. Got yeah. you. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So I think we have, a, I mean, that's a pretty good, good basis to start with. Um, you know, I feel like a lot of times, at least for me, when it comes to being happy with yourself first or something like, I feel like a lot of times people will say, how are you, how is anybody going to love you if you don't love yourself first? Or how is, mm. or how are you going to be able to love anybody else if you don't have if you don't love yourself first, if you're not like comfortable being by yourself or that kind of thing. Um, and so a lot of times, a lot of people will like, feel like they have to kind of go on this journey of self-discovery and, uh, you know, uh, super independence. And then you have, you know, their brother or sister or somebody and they're all messed up, but they have, you know, guys lining up. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So it's mm-hmm. like, is that really, is that really true? Do we really have to be so, uh, do we really have to be so uh, whole before we meet somebody? Yeah. Yes. I was going to say yes I'm, too. I'm going to, I'm going to take that. I'm going to say yes. <clears throat> and here's the thing. I, and I told you before, I, I really hate this thing, you know, oh my God, me and Melvin, we've been dating, you know, Melvin, that's my better half and I just love him. So he's the better half. That means you're the worst half. So, oh, so, so he's the worst part of your relationship or you're the best part. I hate when relationships say he's the better half and he's my better half. No, you're already whole and complete alone. So he doesn't complete you, he compliments you. And so we talk about this idea of being happy when we talk about this idea, I promise you, it's really a simple, a simple notion. Happiness, boyfriend's podcast, is a choice. And you wake up every day choosing to be happy or choosing not to be happy. And that's what I mean as it has, you have to be already whole within yourself. Before anybody can tell you anything, before you can view yourself as not whole or, or I'm, I am an entity all alone. I firmly believe it's a simple decision. I really do. We complicate the process. We bring so many other um, outside entities that just, com- you know, complicates everything. It starts with you. It ends with you. Yeah, I, I completely agree. I think that you have to really be able to be happy within yourself before because if you're not happy with yourself then other people won't be happy with you either they'll see what you see if you see confidence then i'll see confidence if you see beauty then i'm gonna see beauty you know you can't but if you if you present yourself as i don't feel beautiful i don't feel confident i don't feel whatever then i'm gonna i'm gonna see that in you and it's going to portray in all your relationships in life, not just exactly. your partner, but your friendships or your whatever, any type of relationship that you have, your work relationships is going to, you're going to see those insecurities portrayed f- from what you portray. Mm-hmm. I got you. Okay. So here's my thing. And I, you know, I, I agree on some level, but at the same time, I'm like, there is this idea that you kind of have to be perfect before you find, uh, before you find love. And I feel like who said that? Who well, said I that? Mean, but what, what's that whole portion mean? So the portion I'll give you this. Who said that? <laughs> who said, said that? that? Who been saying no, for that? real. No, and I'll, and I'm going to demystify that right now. Okay. Be your best. Perfectly, you be your best, and. Your best is going to look different from day to day, okay? That's all I'm saying. I'm not saying be perfect. I'm saying be your best. So my best on Saturday, January 8th, might be different than my best next Saturday, the 15th. All I'm asking you is to be your best self. And that's going to fluctuate daily. I'm not saying be perfect, but I'm saying whatever you do, strive to be your best in the best moment possible. Mm-hmm. Does that does that make sense sir, for you? Yeah, no, it, it makes sense. It makes sense. Renee, uh, how are you? How are you feeling about this so far? Like, have you have you ever have you ever heard 
I mean, I guess I'm guessing you've heard of this whole like idea yeah. of go, of like, you know, trying to get yourself together first before you start looking for love. And like, how, yeah. where do, how do you feel about that? I, I, I think that that is definitely true in a sense. Uh, but I do want to say as someone who struggles with mental health and who has like extreme low self-esteem, um, it can be kind of difficult because then I'm like, well, I'm, I've like, I've been struggling with it for like the longest time. Like, does that mean I'm like, that I could like, should never find someone because I'll like never <laughs> like that. Right. Um, and I struggle with it from day to day. And on, I will just say like, it's kind of when, when you do have like the confidence that you do, Tony, I do feel like it is kind of easy to say like, just be you just like, like be like happy. Like you choose to be happy. And like, yeah, no, that, that is a thousand percent true. But it's also true that people like have low self-esteem and sometimes they like, they, they will question it. And they'll just be like, 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 am I happy or am I just pretending? Sometimes it is easier to also just like fake it till you make it. That's what I do. I just keep telling myself, like, I'm a bad bitch. Like, I'm amazing. Like, I the next one who, who finds me is just going to be fucking blown away because I'm so amazing. Um, or, you know, like my like, like, you know, this year with like all my resolutions, I'm going to be the best person that I can be. I'm going to be the happiest. I'm going to do what makes me happy. I don't know. I, it definitely is like within your state of mind. And sometimes you do have to kind of like, I don't know, like try to convince, like convince yourself out of those unhappy moments. I don't know. I'm probably talking in circles. But no, I, I, I completely know what you're saying. I was going to say the same thing. One thing you said that stood out to me was fake it till you make it. Because that's the true thing. We all have our own insecurities. We all have our own mm -hmm. things that we struggle with. Like, and no one really has to know those things. Or if, if they, even if they do, it's, it's really up to you to push yourself through it. Those, like you said, those positive affirmations. Sometimes you gotta look in the mirror and say, I'm a bad bitch. Like, even if you don't believe it, you have to say it until you start to feel it. Fake it till you make it because yeah. It's a real thing. Like, I know I have my own things that I struggle with, things that I really want to fix in life and things that make me feel like I'm not the best that I can be. But I don't, it's not really up to the world to determine that. That's up for, that's my own interpretation and what I, what I personally want for myself. That doesn't mean I'm not happy. It just means that I have goals in life and it doesn't take away from the positivity that I should bring to other people or the positivity that I want to bring to myself. It just means that, I have a goal and I'm going to reach that goal or I have something that I know I want to work on and I'm going to work on it, but it just shouldn't, it shouldn't take away from you being happy with yourself because <laughs> who you are is okay. Sorry. Well, I was, I was also just going to say that, like, I, I do like what you said, Tony, about the, um, you know, wanting to like be your best self for the person that you find. That's great. But it's, it's also kind of nice when someone kind of, you know, brings out that best side of you. I, for one, I'm such a home. Oh. I'm super lazy and I could be like, I could, I could feel quote unquote content, like just at home doing nothing, but that'll slowly make me like kind of depressed. Like, man, I haven't been doing anything. So sometimes it's like nice to have that person that's just like, you know what? We've been like sitting around all day. Like, let's go out and do this. Like you smile more when we're doing this together. Like, let's go do more of that and stuff like that. So like, sometimes it is nice to have that person just kind of like, to like help push you in the right direction. Obviously like not for you to like lean on them all the time and heavily rely on them for you being happy, but it is nice to kind of have that, like that person to bring that out of you. So question, would you say that because you said it's, it's nice to have that person. Do you, are you saying that you need that person to be able to pull you out of that funk? Or are you just saying? Sometimes it makes it easier to, um, and it doesn't even have to be like romantic partner. Cause you know, I haven't, I don't, I've never really had a romantic partner. So I've been, you know, I have my friends to kind of help me through this. I mean, obviously they're not always going to be there for me and it's like not their job um, to do that for me, but it is nice just to kind of like have, you know, those like people who remind you like, yeah, Renee, you, you are a bad bitch. So you shouldn't be sitting on the couch. You should go put on your favorite dress and go have some margaritas with us. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it is. It is nice to have, you know, somebody who helps us along our personal journey, our personal journey. Yeah. It's always going to be the person. Everything, <laughs> everything that you need is already within. Right. And so <clears throat> when, when I hope, when I said that whole notion about be your best self 
for the I didn't say for the person, I said be your best self. And it's just simply for you. That's why I said your best self is going to change every day. And I think what's going to help people who are struggling with this idea of what happiness looks like, your your brain automatically tells you reasons why it's the opposite. Like we 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 trip ourselves up naturally all the time. Like, oh my God, Renee, you're such a fuck up. Or, you know, Tony, why you always, why do you always do this, do things like this? Why are you always so uh, uh, a, a hat or a tip because your brain tells you otherwise, ask your, turn your affirmations into a question. And so if you say, what you say, Renee, I'm the shit. Now turn it into a question. Why am I the shit? And now your brain is going to find reasons why you're the shit. Ooh. I'm the shit because, you know, my hair is always popping. I'm the oh. shit because my lip gloss is popping. Have, have you seen my curls? <laughs> <laughs> and, they're, and they're popping and I love them. So turn the affirmation into a question and then your brain will find reasons as to why that is true. Because it happens naturally on the opposite side. I love that, Tony. I yeah. really do. That's, that's, that's really good. That's, what, that's actually what my therapist told me to do more of. <laughs> I'm that's talking what? just a talk. That's I know a little stuff. <laughs> why? <laughs> like, what do you like about yourself? And like, it's so bad. Like I'm always like my hair. I love my hair. Um, it's so bomb. <laughs> it makes me happy. And like I actually found like a, a great meditation with my hair. Like, yes. like my whole like hair routine. Literally, okay. like my little pocket of happiness once a week. I'm just like mm. I like cut my hair mask in. I get to do like a deep oil condition. And that's like another thing. Like you can. I, I know a lot of times um, what we talked about on this podcast is like relationships, but like the best way to feel happy is to, of course, have that relationship with yourself. And that is like something that like that is my relationship with myself is I don't know if it sounds superficial. It's just like taking care of my hair, taking care of my skin. Oh my God. But, like that is just like that. That's my pocket's happiness. What are some guys? Yeah. What, what are some things that y'all do? to make yourself happy, like, to make yourself feel like, oh, this this is my happy place. Literally. Well, obviously for you, it's your hair. Yeah. We know. <laughs> that, that is the biggest. What about, you? what about you, Jared? Man, when I think about what I do to make myself feel like I'm in my happy place, I mean, I'll, I'll it's it's when I can focus in on something. So whether it is like I love to I love to build, I love to create, I love to uh, progress. When I feel like I'm growing, then I'm in my happy place. So whether it's you know like editing this podcast or um, or writing or even playing a video game, um, as long as I'm winning. <laughs> <laughs> are you the one that throws the remote when you like let I used to I don't do that anymore I still curse a little oh bit God. but I you know I don't go I don't go quite that crazy anymore um, that's how Jeremy is <laughs> see that's he that that's me. that masculine part that comes out <laughs> oh that's the that's the leaning masculine that's where that's where that's the, yeah. you know, when I'm gaming I'm like alpha male, okay <laughs> <laughs> oh god oh like y'all don't want to see me get in my competitive side okay that's like i actually kind of really good though <laughs> 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 um, comes out more yeah, during I'm... your tennis what'd you say Ooh, that's a good question. your competitive side does it come out more in like video games or tennis uh it comes out i will say when i'm i'll say it comes out in both but i have to be competent so if I'm in a match, like in a tennis match with somebody that I know is better than me, then I don't really get all that upset because I'm like, whatever. But if I know I can beat this person and I'm like screwing up, then you might get like a Serena Williams moment, like, <laughs> you know, just like slamming it on the ground or whatever, like, uh, like you know, that frustration comes out. Um, same thing with with video games. You know, if I feel like I should be able to to beat this person or if I should be able to win, then you know, and I'm not that frustration kind of kind of builds up for me. But mm -hmm. yeah, anytime I can progress or uh, build something or create something, and I'm just in like a creative space. Um, but you know, I've also learned like I've had to like a lot of people talk about like dating yourself and. Uh, I feel like 
on, I feel like it's important. It's a little bit of a silly phrase, but Mm -hmm. I think it's important to kind of do the things that you want to do. Like I am at a point now, like I used to not go, I used to be afraid of like going to the movies by myself or going to eat by myself. And it was just like, it's just, you know, at one point it's just like, it's silly. Like who wants to do all that by themselves? But slowly over time, I've gotten to the point where I'm like, okay, I'm going to go to the movies. I'm going to go eat. Uh, I've been to a concert by myself. Um, I'm going to plan a trip. uh, Hopefully um, have that planned uh, abroad, like go to like the UK or something by myself. Um, I can't keep waiting for all these people to be in my life in order to go and Mm -hmm. and do things with. I mean, you know, I haven't like, and this is, this is, I guess, uh, a new uh, thing that I'm telling y'all, but I've never traveled outside of the country and I've been waiting, waiting, waiting. Like I have my passport, but I've been waiting for the moment, waiting for the people, waiting for, you know, made it you know, the money, but I, you know, I could have, I could have done something if, uh, if I had enough, um, if I had the people around me to, to go travel. Um, well, real but, quick, if you do decide to travel, what, what, depending on where you want to go, I know you said you want to be alone, but think about adding me because I don't mind tagging along. Be alone together. Cute little trip. <laughs> okay. All together in Europe, it's fine. <laughs> I would love that. I would love it. So. Sounds good. Sounds good. Well, look, I will absolutely uh, invite you. Um, but yeah, it's like, you, you wait for that stuff to happen and something like this pandemic happens and you can't go nowhere. I mean, like you quote unquote, can't go anywhere. Cause now it's like, <laughs> but um, you know, you for a minute there, it's like, you just kind of lost the chance and you don't know when you're going to get it back. So you kind of have to do what you want and not worry about, you know, having that significant other, um, and just kind of focus on your own happiness. And I feel like when, when you do those things, the people who want to do those things with you on some level will kind of show up or you'll have those similar interests. Or maybe when you're out on that trip, you'll meet somebody or something like that. You know, you'll run into people. You'll be more open because you're alone. You'll be more open to talking with people and you'll be able to meet more people that way because you're just doing things that you like to do. So. I want to steal one of Tony's uh, lines right now, if that's okay with you, Tony. Um, <laughs> um, just to piggyback off of what you were saying, like when you are happy with yourself, you, your light starts to shine. And when that light is shining, you're going to attract what you're supposed to attract. Now you might attract some bugs, but that's okay. Yep. You know, because the bugs now, okay. will be gone. They'll, the bugs die in the light. You know, they can't they can't stay in your light and what you're supposed to attract will will come. And so that's a part of being happy with yourself. So when you do take that trip or when you do go out to eat and you're in your light and you're being happy with yourself, what's supposed to happen is going to happen. And you don't have don't dwell in the fact that I'm sitting here eating alone, but I'm sitting here eating alone and that's okay. And then uh, blase, blase, whatever. Jim, John and Joe walks up to you. And like, exactly. hey, you know, not Tom, I just Dick saw and you Harry. sitting here. Not Tom, Dick, and Harry because I got <laughs> chewed out. I got chewed out for that last time too. <laughs> Wait, who chewed you out for Tom, Dick, and Harry? <laughs> Child, them comments, Woo, Lord, they beat you up. up. I will Look. say though. Um, I think that when you start to date yourself, it does get a little dangerous. In the sense that you're gonna get like addicted to that alone time. Mm. <laughs> like, yes. Like when I found out that like going to the movies by myself, that's like my favorite thing to do. Should go to the movies by myself, get a small popcorn, put some crunch balls in there and just like chill out. When I figured out that going to the movies by yourself is better than going with friends. I was like, I don't want to go to the movies with you. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. No, yeah. You got to find that fine line. (laughs) Because like like, when when you date yourself, oh my God, it's so much fun. Because like, oh, I don't, I can't even describe it sometimes because like, again, I've never had a boyfriend. So I've been dating myself for, I am my longest relationship and we've had, we've had some fights in the past, obviously. (laughs) Um, But uh, like, I I do like dating myself. It's fun. And I got to, I still want a boyfriend, but I'm so addicted to alone time that I'm scared for him if he ever comes. (laughs) I'm going to be very hard to please. (laughs) Yes, you got to make sure. 
Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. No, I was going to ask, have you been keeping your, your boundaries with the certain someone you've been? Yes, I have. I have. <laughs> okay. Because, like, honestly, like, I still with that someone I'm still happy just like by myself and I already I just kind of know I'm like I don't know if you're gonna like add to my happiness like right now you're definitely adding to my fun but to like my overall happiness I don't yeah. think Ooh. and that's the thing <laughs> that, that that I like that I like that why you said that Renee I mean and I when I was thinking of this question that you asked Melvin about those pockets of happiness and where you find yourself in I'm like oh my god it's such a loaded question I really had to sit back and like <laughs> There are a lot of things that make me happy and a lot of simple things. Obviously, the work that I do makes me happy. It's heavy, but, oh my God, but it makes me happy. Oh, I, I'm sorry. You're fine. You're good. You only went up for a second. Obviously, the work that I do makes me happy, right? And so cooking, I love cooking. Cooking makes me happy. Ooh, Being by myself. Thank you, baby. Being by myself in certain aspects make me happy. So I think the whole bottom line to it is where do you find fulfillment at, right? And so happiness is finding your passion, aka what are you being fulfilled at? What area in your life brings fulfillment to you? You know, so think mm. of it that way. Because I'm like, I had to sit back. I'm like, ooh, like, ooh, Melvin's getting me today. I'm like, no. <laughs> <laughs> okay so i have a question yeah um so since we're talking about like what it takes to be happy with yourself i want to ask like why so many of mm, us there we go. feel alone in the first place and i feel like um and i and i will say like you know like gay men in particular there is and I feel like it, 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 it happens even when we have a circle of friends, a lot of us still feel very alone. Um, I don't know. Let me know if that's true. Uh, but like, like why, why do we, why do we feel like that? Um, where, what, where are we, what are we lacking? I mean, is it, is it the, is it the love thing or is it, is it just deeper connections with our friends? Like what, where, what is it? I, mean, I think, a lot of people, I, like, if you've never felt lonely in your life, I don't trust you. <laughs> like, it, it's super easy to feel lonely. I think especially um, nowadays with social media, because I feel like when you are when you are alone, you're just sitting on a couch, instant FOMO. You just see, like, a bunch of people with their friends doing things. You'll, like, look at their story. They're at a bar having fun. But, like, really, you were just at a bar, like, a couple of days ago having fun. Like, you can't you don't have to do it every single day. Um, and I think that can kind of trigger that loneliness of just seeing, you know, someone else in a relationship or seeing someone like on their honeymoon posting to their story and stuff like that, that can easily make you feel like. So would you say that's loneliness or a hint of jealousy? I think honestly, it can be both. I think jealousy triggers loneliness and loneliness triggers jealousy. Especially, mm. And especially with social media. That can, I feel like those feelings can definitely go hand in hand. Um, and I think when Jared said something about like missing a deeper connection, I feel like I feel less, I, I, I still definitely feel that um, every once in a while, like when I'm just kind of thinking about it, I'm like, man, it'd be really nice to like know that deeper connection and to like kind of like feel that connection where I'm not nervous with someone or like I feel comfortable with someone like we we are connecting deep enough where I'm not wondering like oh what's he thinking <laughs> or like it's like am I am, am I still like good enough for him or like do I have to do something different kind of thing yeah so like those deeper connections yeah I think that's the lack of that kind of makes me feel lonely but I feel like mostly it's just sometimes looking on social media and seeing everyone like doing doing things and I have to remind myself like that's their life this is your life. Your life is awesome. I think also, I mean, at least for me, sometimes it can feel like I am the one that has to put things together in order to get invited to stuff. Like, mm -hmm. I, like I know people, I know a lot of acquaintances, but I will never get invited. But if I do something and invite them, they'll, they'll come. I mean, you know, it's not, it's, it's, um, it's a amicable relationship, but it's like, 
you know, trying, trying to form a deeper bond is really hard when it's only one way, you know what I'm saying? Um, and I'm just curious if anybody else feels like that. Um, I think I, I think I get what you're saying. Um, but I just, I don't know. I'm, I think I'm, I'm a very rational person when it comes to certain things. And I think that's almost like a wall that I put up for myself to not be able to get hurt. And so when I feel that uh, feeling of like of one sidedness, I'll pull away. And so, I, so that way I don't, because I'm like, if, if I don't feel the, if I don't feel the same energy that I'm putting in, then that means just maybe, maybe we're not meant to be, or maybe we're not meant to be friends, whatever, it, whatever the relationship is, maybe that's just not in the cards for us. Um, Cause I have friends out here, especially being a transplant in Philadelphia is I have my close friends. I, they, they're all over there in Texas, they're in New York, they're in DC. Those are my close friends. So being a transplant out here is really hard trying to find a circle or a crew, you know, that I'm going to call my friends. It's usually Jeremy's friends have become, I, I, I've, I've adopted them. So I, don't, I can't say that I have, I do have close friends out here. Let me clarify that for somebody to chew me out. Um, but um, I've, I've had to like, nurture those relationships on my own I had it took time I've been here now for two years and I'm just now getting those close friends you know what <laughs> I mean and and that's and, and it, it's it's been a bad couple of bad apples in the bunch I'm like oh, you know I thought it was gonna click but the it's not really there it's not really working like I thought it was gonna work you know or I've tried to hang out with you and we just didn't really have any conversation or I feel like you weren't putting in that putting in that energy that I was putting in to be your friend and so yeah. just pull yourself away until you find those people that are giving you the energy that you feel like you deserve yeah you know I was actually what were you saying Renee I said I, I was just trying to like swing it back to the overall topic of being happy <laughs> and so I was just saying like what he was saying is like looking for those people is like what kind of makes you happy feel less lonely yeah <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah y'all gonna um, travel with me really quickly because it is hot in here <laughs> oh, good um so yeah i was actually talking with a friend uh, a couple days ago and and we were talking about how it's i don't know i don't it, like philly just feels very different as far as well i don't know i don't really have any other experience in other cities but uh philly just feels very closed to new friendships and I just want to know if you guys feel that same way because Renee and Melvin you guys are from different areas um is it easier to make friends or to form those connections in different cities versus Philly because my my reasoning about Philly uh being a little bit harder is that a lot of people who are here are people who have either lived here their whole life and have known, you know, know the people that are around them and that's kind of what it is. And then you've got another group who come here for college and stay here for a few years and click up and then they leave. They, like not a lot of people come <clears throat> here for college and stay, you know? So it's like a little bit of a different atmosphere than like a city like New York where there are a ton of transplants or Atlanta where there are a ton of transplants and everybody is looking to make connections, you know? So I don't know, that's just my rationale, but I'm curious what you guys think about, I guess, like I Philly think. in general, as far as making those connections. Honestly, this is going to sound a little silly, but I think it's because while we do have public transportation here in Philly, it can get a little difficult. So if you guys like live in two separate neighborhoods it can be really hard to link up sometimes. <laughs> like my best friend is an hour away from me. It's a it's a bus to a train to another train to her house. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> like so like I'll see you when I see you, girl. <laughs> I, I, like, oh, you guys know I live far. Like I live on the very outskirts of Philly. And I feel like it's sometimes difficult for me to like kind of like forge those friendships and keep them because like, I don't want to travel an hour just to come, like, have one glass of wine and then travel an hour back. <laughs> no, see, I get it. <laughs> so um, I, 
that can kind of play into it too but yeah no one actually i think me and melvin are just fucking crazy um no one actually wants to move to philadelphia oh and i will say like, that when um, i was in new york I, I felt happened. oh i'm sorry go ahead no nothing i was just <laughs> She wanted to clean that up wanna... before uh, Philly TikTok got on her behind. <laughs> yeah, they... please don't, please don't come for me. <laughs> you next, you next on the chopping block, right now. You are next up. I'm telling you, y'all get her. As a matter of fact, no, just kidding. <laughs> no, I will say I felt the the same feeling that you're saying uh, about Philly is how I felt about New York. I felt that. It was difficult to make friends outside of the friends that I had because people wanted to stick with their crew or like whatever, you know, whatever that was that they were feeling. Like I felt, I felt that it was a different energy. Now there were far and few in between people that I did have a genuine connection with and I was able to build an actual bar with those people. And so, but I think that speaks to just who I am and who, you are, you know what I mean? Everybody not meant to be your friend. Everybody's not meant to have your vibe. And if you have a particular vibe, that's okay. You just got to find that vibe, find people with those, with that vibe. You know what I mean? And cause every, if you, if everybody was meant to be friends, then we would all be friends. You know what I mean? You wouldn't have enemies. And so when you do, when you do, when you find somebody that just so happened to click with, Take, take that and try to build it. And if it doesn't build anywhere, then move around and go to the next one, you know, mm -hmm. and just keep going. Because like Renee said, let's bring it back to the topic. When you're happy with yourself, it's okay to be alone. It's okay to understand that everybody's not going to be your type. Everybody's not going to be for you. And you have mm -hmm. to be happy with that fact. Yeah. Um... Does that make sense? Yeah, no, you're making sense. You're making sense. You know, the happy by yourself thing, I feel like it only goes so far. You know what I'm saying? Like, it, it's like, it's, it, it's good to be happy with yourself. But that's a good skill to have. But at the same time, I feel like you need people. You need, you need a network. You need, uh, you need <clears throat> relationships in your life. You, I mean, you know, part of the, like y'all are gonna burn me out. Y'all are gonna burn me out. <laughs> We're gonna burn you out. Okay, explain <laughs> that. Y'all are going to burn me out. Oh my god. So it's not saying I'm happy with myself. It's not saying it's the absence of I'm this happy or you know this pleased with being happy with people around me. It's the foundation. That's what I'm saying. If I'm happy with myself, that's the foundation to everything else. So I, I, would, I really don't want people to get, you know, confused about this whole concept. Yes, I am happy with myself does not mean I'm happy by myself. That's, that's it. No, it starts there and it ends there. Meaning if I'm happy with myself, everything else, is, everything else comes. It starts with you. And then as a result of you being happy with yourself, you're able to forge relationships with other people because, and you, we talk about this notion of happiness and why am I happy with myself? It's about accepting. If there's something that you cannot change, then you have no choice to then to accept it. And if you have the power to change something within yourself, then do that. But if you literally cannot change an aspect about yourself, then you have to get an understanding of what it looks like to start to accept that aspect. But I'm, I'm, I really want people, and I'm, I'm speaking to everybody out there, Twitter land, Facebook, Instagram, it starts with you as the foundation to everything else. I'm not saying that's just solely what it is. And I, I is, is that clear now, Mr. Jerry? <laughs> please, that's please. That's, that's, look, I am just like I'm part of part part of me is playing devil's advocate. So I mean, I I get what you're saying. I get what you're saying. But I mean, I think also is we, I think we're kind of talking into two different lanes of being happy with yourself. We're talking about being happy with yourself internally and also being happy by doing things by yourself in the absence of anyone else around. And I but think- Which, which are, side are you coming from? Yeah, yeah, what side are you coming from? Well, when I was talking, I was talking about being happy, doing things by yourself. And maybe I didn't, 
parse the topic well enough to to kind of uh, talk about which lane we're in. But I mean, I think I, mean, I don't know. I think I think the topic. I think we've kind of run the gamut on on both on both ends. But um, well, don't both ends just kind of like still kind of come together? <laughs> I mean, because like oh, yeah. I, yeah. I mean, they, they, they all end up like the same thing, kind of, if that makes sense. Like happy is happy. You can be happy by yourself. You can be happy with other people. Make sure you find those people that make you happy. Um, I think it go. I think it all, it just goes hand in hand. And if you're happy with yourself, then you're more likely to find those people that make you happy and not bring you down because you're going to automatically realize like, mm, you're fucking up my vibe right now. Exactly. That's, <laughs> yes. That's, yes. That's, 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 Yes. And, and, and as, a, as an overall topic, you know, the overall the, um, theme that we talk about is finding your circle and your man, right? And so you're not going to have a man if you got some shit within you that you need to fix. You're not going to have a circle if you're the bitch. We talked about that bitch before in that, in that couple episodes ago. Nobody's going to want to be around you. So internally, you have to do some work in order for people to be attracted to you, whether that's romantically or friendship-wise. And I think we'll Will Smith said something like a couple years ago, like, what was it? Something along the lines of making somebody else in charge of your happiness is selfish. And so I can't expect my partner. Yes, my partner, there are things that my partner does to make me happy. But the sole responsibility of, oh, you're supposed to be doing this and you're supposed to be doing this so I can feel better. That's selfish as fuck. Mm -hmm. That is selfish as AF. Okay, okay, so perfect. Has, <laughs> exactly. You don't have to be perfect. You cannot. Completely satisfied in every section of your life because that leads to zero growth personally. Exactly. But like don't rely on someone to like bring out that happiness. Like that's not gonna make you happy. You're still gonna friends feel like or romantic. <laughs> right. I, I love my friends because they just make me happy. Great. They should be complimenting you, not completing you. They should be adding to that happiness, right? but it's not the sole source of it. My boyfriend is not the sole source of why I'm happy. So when that boyfriend leaves your life, now there's nobody else. I mean, like, so where do you find your happiness now? Like, it's, it's gonna always be that void that needs to be filled. And that's unfair to that person and it's selfish on your part. Okay. So if we had to give a one sentence answer to the person out there who is struggling being happy with themselves, what would you guys say? I'll start it off. I'm going to say, uh, for me, you need to, mm. like, I love what Tony said earlier, take your affirmations and, and turn it into a question. Because that's really, that's, I think that's beautiful. Why am I a bad bitch? Why? I think that, like, why am I a bad bitch? That, that is amazing, you know? Because once you start to answer those questions for yourself, you will be able to, feed into that and be like exude that and once you exude it other people will see it and they'll be attracted to what they'll be attracted to what they see and then you'll be able to find your circle and your man yeah <laughs> i think i think mine would be find what makes you happy and just keep doing it and if you can't find it then fake it until you make it until you find it <laughs> and then keep doing and just keep doing it and then when you are happy you're gonna find other people that complement that happiness and you're gonna find the people that do not and they might already be in your life and then you're gonna find out wow you add nothing to my happiness there we go <laughs> and you're gonna you're gonna slowly start to get happier and happier you're gonna have those bad days but you're gonna like tony said you're still gonna have that foundation of happy to work off of and continue to grow from mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I, 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 <laughs> no, because no, I'm still trying to figure out. That's all. I was still trying to figure out. While I was gonna go ahead, Jerry. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I would say focus on the focus on the uh, the different tasks and the different uh, hobbies and whatever you have going on that 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 fills you up, that lights you up. Do the things that you like to do. Focus on those things, and. Uh, if you're looking to meet people, if you're looking to get into a relationship, you know, try to find people that are, that have similar interests to those things. You know, it took me a long time to finally get to, um, 
you know, my, my tennis group, the, my other tennis group where it feels like, you know, we're together, you know, it feels like we, we kind of have some things in common. Um, and, you know, I've gone from community organization to community organization, and it's just like, it has not worked. So it's going, it might take you some time, but that would be my advice. Focus on the things that you like to do, even if in the interim there you, you're not necessarily connected with a whole lot of people or connecting with a love interest or something like that, you know, just do you. And um, eventually though, those things will fall into place. The time you put in yourself is the greatest investment you can ever make. Love it. <laughs> that is so true. I, re I really, I think, I think the thing I want to leave everybody off with is about the simplicity of life. It doesn't take this big grand gesture. Oh, for me, I speak, I, I, I speak for me. I, for me, it's simple things in life that make me happy. And, and investing, like Renee said, investing in those simple things. And realizing that control plays a big part. Realize what you have direct control over. Everything outside of that, we get so bogged down on the things that really have, we have no control over. Okay, why are you gonna let this thing affect you when it, should have, when it, sh it shouldn't? And so focus on the things that you have direct control over, the simple things in life and focus on what you can change. If there's an aspect that you can change. There you go. All right. So uh, thank you guys for watching uh, our virtual episode of Boyfriends. I promise we will be back together it. next week in the actual studio with the whole camera set up and everything looking all good. But uh, <laughs> thank you for sticking with us this time. <laughs> oh, thank you. Yeah, make sure you like, yes. subscribe, uh, comment, share all this <laughs> stuff. Give us uh, some reviews on the podcast channels as well, because we want to rise up there in the ranks as well. Um, and thanks to all of our new viewers as well. That clip uh, kind of helped us out a little bit. So, you know, let's let's show them the shirt one more time, Jerry. Show them the shirt. Oh, show the shirt, Jerry. Put it on, put it on. Yes. 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 <laughs> I love it. Oh I my freaking God. love it. I, I need one of these, actually. I need, I need, oh, we I need, all need one. We all need, a, we all need to wear one. Please, Jared. <laughs> they I, are gonna, they're going to say lean and feminine, actually. I think I want mine to say lean and feminine. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> I want mine to say lean and feminine, too. There you I go. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, again, uh, thank you, guys. Um, trying to remember my line if you don't have anyone else you got us i never you remember. have us <laughs>